Yeah. Every week we come in live with it. Number one show, yeah, you know we top five with it. Shout out to the host, Miss Lex Alexander. If you have a hot topic, you should ask her to cover it. Audience loving it. Clap, clap, bravo to the show that keeps you company. From politics, politics to entertainment, entertainment, relationships, spiritual awaken. Yeah, we cover it all. Food for thought for my sisters and brothers involved. From that 318 to 225 for real. 504 to 985, you feel? Yeah, we the best out. Conversation debating on what's next now. Miss Lex Alexander all across the globe. You are now tuned in to the Counter Talk Show. We are now live from that Counter Talk. You are tuned in to that Counter Talk. We are now live from that Counter Talk. You are tuned in to that Counter Talk. We are now live from that Counter Talk. You are tuned in to that Counter Talk. We are now live from that Counter Talk. You are tuned in to that Counter Talk. What is up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Counter Talk, where, you know, I get off into all this spiritual and other random things and things. Um, This episode in particular, though, is a continuation of my seven-year tribulation on a cycle series that I'm doing within, like, a series, I guess. I'm really just captivated with how much I was able to decode and see and understand what was happening. That's like my whole point of just kind of like sharing this in between, you know, me interviewing others and just touching bases on other shit too. So yeah, the last episode was about 2017, and I said I was going to dive off into 2018, which, let me take a sip. Ooh, and might I add, oh, man, um, those past episodes, I was definitely going through this sign and shit, and so glad the rain came through and just kind of, like, calm all the tree fucking down because that pollen was on my ass but yeah anyways um 2018 was just this mysterious ass year i didn't realize um it was me really delving off into the dark side of shit so people i had like criticized or judged their situations as far as like oh that could never be me i would never do that this and a third it was kind of like that type of shit became the running theme for my life for like the next two years um 2018 2019 2018 in particular it started off pretty rough um but what was so magical and random, I was working a job and I saw like a last name that was like my dad's last name. And it was just like so crazy to me because like I don't see this name often. And it was so random. And come to find out, it's my cousin on my dad's side who had just passed in like the end of 2017. So to me, that was him communicating with me. That alignment right there, that alignment shit was like starting there. Um, even more so as far as me like being aware of it. Um, that was just like a really cool experience in itself because it it gave me a chance to kind of, you know, know my daddy people better. <clears throat> hear stories and things like I had never like heard or even just being like around your own blood that was just like a comfortable feeling but at the same time a bitch is in survival mode I'm trying to like get things back in order for myself because I was just so displaced and just out of it. I was just trying to make 
sense of like this world post my father leaving. Um, so 2018 is going and that's when I'm getting back into doing like my interview style show that I had called Counterculture. And basically I just, you know, got to know um, different underground artists and people who had different things that were going and I would interview them. And it was just so like, exciting because I began doing it in 2017 it gave me a chance to like start editing and learning how to edit and seeing how it is to like reach out to people and network with people and just how all that flows it was always like a natural good feeling for me so that's how I knew I wanted to pursue things dealing with um socializing with people and being able to see what the fuck their perspective is or simply what it is what they do you meet all type of interesting people and they're very fucking talented and i was just it's like okay i am that person that's gonna tell this person's story or give them this medium to tell their story because i actually give a fuck about what it is you're doing type shit so Getting back into counterculture was really cool. Um, I had my camera. I'm making things happen. And then I end up getting blessed with my own, like, place. It was, like, this all wood, like, studio apartment. And it was just really cool. It was just, like, this safe space I had attractive for myself it was my first time actually just like living alone and it's just me that's when you start getting the chance to like really really face yourself you really getting a chance to like begin to learn even more so what you like what you don't like what keeps you at peace what keeps you at like your natural state type shit So I was getting the opportunity to kind of like get back in tune with myself after that shock. Because after I found out my dad passed me, I was, I felt like I was froze for like four days. It felt like a, I just couldn't believe that shit at the time, you know? Um, And that's how living alone I understood was like healing for me. Um, Well, this is me looking back on the shit. At the time, it was great, but you know, eventually I'm like, man, I'm feeling kind of alone, kind of vulnerable. I was very single and I began working like a new job and I was really. Tapping back in with myself. Uh, hell. Living alone. Then. And now it's like, I'm thankful and grateful for this shit. Back then, I should have, like, taken advantage of it longer. I delve off into <laughs> what happened with it. Uh, like I said, I was getting out more. I was, um doing like my interviews and things like that. I had this really amazing girl. I was cool at name, uh, Tiara, Tiara McMillan Johnson. That's her name now. She is a fucking gem, just an amazing person. Uh, She was like, you know, girl, you want to come and film some stuff for me and blah, blah. You know, she was just a very sweet and genuine person. Like, one of those people like, hey, you know, I see what it is you're trying to do. Let me give you some shit to do. I was all up for it. I had been written this series called um, <laughs> Catch-22. Now, it was loosely based off of this situationship. Uh, I guess you could call it yeah, a situationship. I was in, like, more so, like, in 2016, um, but it's not 
it verbatim, but it was kind of loosely based off of it. It was what inspired me to do it. The guy that inspired, like, the main character, Dino, I would be talking to him and my way of channeling to him and not being upset with him would be me reading out all this shit that I've written. And he would fucking sit and listen. My dog, my dog. Like, I was thankful for it. So, I had a homeboy, Charles Hollywood Hardy, a.k.a. Uh, he, the nigga used to be called Chocolate Sensation back in the MySpace days. Okay. This guy had a uh, big, he has big ambition. Um, he was working on filming things and working on things at the time. So things starting to line up. It's like, boom. I have someone that's like willing to work with me. And then being at the place. Tierra asked me to be, I ended up bumping into this cool ass shit that just so happened to be like a fucking like theater person. Like she's an actress type shit. And then I reached out to my homeboys at shout out to Toon, Louisiana Toon, after holding it down in Texas. Um I reached out to him. He was like, hey, I know this chick. You know, she acting, doing her acting thing. So I'm like, shit, man, all this shit just started flowing. It was beautiful. It was just so organic, like how it was happening. And then I end up hitting up my partner, Jeremy. And he was like, shit, yeah, I'm fucking with it. I'll do it. And those people, like, showed up for me. We even had, like, a production assistant named Jordan that was holding it down, like, helping with the mics and setting props it was just all just like flowing and it gave me a chance to see this what the fuck it is i want to do this is what it is i am going to do i am birthing this idea and it felt good and it felt natural we continued recording we were dropping our episodes it was just a really nice feeling and then your girl even got like offered like a developmental deal type situation. So I'm like, man, I'm hype. Like I'm this this feeling I'm feeling just felt so good. But it'll be like I would get home and I would feel alone and wah, wah, wah. so it's like, okay, bitch, what's up, Ben? Like, what you gonna do about it? I was working at a new job. I wasn't working with my cousin anymore. So I was working at this new place. And I ended up attracting this older guy. Baby, I didn't understand how green I still was at the time. I didn't understand, like, the power and just continue to focus on the mission and what it is I was doing. I was fucking vulnerable. My God. Like I'm vulnerable. I'm literally like, hey, I'ma give him a chance because I just overcame some stuff and he seems like he's a nice person and he would be cool to like hang with and be around type shit. Now granted it's not like oh I didn't have access to like other people but at the time that was the only person that was really showing me a whole lot of attention doing like really nice things for me. It was just kind of like the the methodology of like a a narcissist is type kind of like, oh man, it's just like very I'm going to get to that part. So in the beginning, everything was all cool and then 
it's like that first time you have friction with someone. It's like, damn, like, okay, I see how this is making me feel, but I'm not used to it. So I just let it go and just keep, you know, moving forward. It ended up becoming a thing of, like, I'm coexisting with this person. Like, we're living together. And then it's just nothing but struggle. No type of, like, inspiration. Um, The little bit of support that I did get as far as, like, my creativity, it faded away. It was like I got pulled into someone else's void. I got pulled into their world and all this shit. And I started losing myself. I started forgetting about myself. I started kind of beefing with myself. <coughs> um, then things kind of turned sour, even more so sour, going into 2019. But 2018 itself, it ended very weird. I was in a weird space. I want to believe I was happy because I quote unquote had someone, but I mean, it wasn't like it was my twin flame. It wasn't a soulmate. It was a karmic contract that I had to fulfill. It was a karmic lesson that I had to learn. Um, people that I had judged who had been like in abusive situations, uh, people I had judged who or having to like pick up slack in households, people who I judge who are depressed within relationships, people I had judged for so much shit, I saw it. I started to see it. But you know, it was cool in 2018. It was me leaving. My world that had just fallen apart. It was just kind of like this aftermath, like this dystopian type shit. And I end up just getting found by some fucking, I don't know what to call it, but I got found. And I had some shit to learn. And to me, until I like tapped in with my ancestors like the following year, I didn't understand. Like, I had tapped in with them, but I'm saying, like, as far as, like, I need y'all to help me get up out this situation because I had never experienced anything like that before. The way the shit had changed me ultimately was crazy. Um, So, fuck it. I'm going to just go ahead and let this run into 2019. So, 2019, I had, like, a homeboy I was just running with about like you know what had been going on in my life by the time I got home the person I had been like dating and living with was calling my phone cursing me out and going off about hearing something about him from some nigga that was gossiping at a restaurant. And I just thought that was just like, that's some bitch ass shit. Like, that was like, to me at the time, I got upset. And I thought like I could eventually like be cool with that person again. But to me, that was just like on some bitch ass nigga shit. Like, that nigga don't understand. Like, now, granted, I get that you don't talk about anybody I wasn't down talking him it was just that he genuinely felt like I don't need to be discussing shit with nobody now I'm the age I am now I get that but I had never dealt with shit like that before you know to the extent so that is where shit just like got bad and I would just be feeling bad. I would try to find happiness, but it was more so like in what 
I was doing with that person type shit. But I didn't know what my own like personal happiness was at that time. It was just kind of like I was just out of it. Oh uh, shit! I <laughs> I started like working more. I'm working like a job overnight. I'm still working a day job part time. It was just a lot. I felt like I was just wearing myself down, trying to grow up real quick, knowing I had been pretty sheltered, taken care of, looked out for, whatever. For the longest, and it's like here I am, like being put in positions that I had judged before. That shit was a part of my character development. That shit made me stronger. That shit is what helped make me a woman. That shit is what helped me, like, hey, I ain't going for this shit. It taught me order. It helped me grow. It challenged me. 2019 was just just full of challenges and overcoming. It was sharpening my mind. At the same time, my heart is getting shitted on. I'm weak. The worst possible, like, what the fuck? Like, this, I can't listen to what the fuck I want to listen to. Can't watch what I want to watch unless, like, this motherfucker is not around. Other than that, he's like, he just want me to be his little lap dog. And it's all about me and my problems and what I got going on. And we're going to listen to what I want to listen to. We're going to watch what I want to watch. And all that. It wasn't like that in the beginning. But it, wasn't, it showed me, like, this nigga is showing me his dark side. And he wants me to still love and accept him. And at the same time, it was pulling out my dark side. Because my dark side is highly critical of this shit. My dark side ain't even going for this shit. So that's when the clashing start bringing out that dark in me, start bringing out that beast in me. And it's like, man, what the fuck? Who is this person? Like, I didn't grow up around my parents arguing and, like, all doing all this shit. Like, my parents weren't doing all it. It was just kind of like, man, what the fuck? This shit is changing me. It's, It's warping my mind. It's not what love is. This is not no fucking love. I would be alone even though I'm around other people. We not thinking about the same shit. I'm having to kind of like I I guess I don't want to say dumb myself down but I'm having to make myself care about what the fuck they're caring about just to feel a sense of connectedness. And it just got to a point like I had no choice but to start tapping back in with God. And praying and and tapping back in with spirit, praying and calling on my ancestors, knowing like this that strength that's helping me like mentally get through. Cause keep in mind being in this situation, like I'm all isolated and shit. My friends ain't seen me and shit. My mom, my man, that shit crazy. Like to know I was away for that long and wasn't even being myself. It was like being in a mental fucking prison. And once, like, all that bad shit started happening, cheating and the lying and the... Man, that shit was kind of like, okay. My dark side, it's, it's feeding this dark energy that was in me that I had not known as well before. Like, we all have, like, our little fucked up thoughts and shit we feel and this and the third but I had never just like sat with it it would jump out at times but I never just sat with it and allowed it to control me was like feeling like I'm bad and being bad it was necessary it was a part of duality and understanding like hey This part of me is showing me how to not get fucked over. This part of me is defending me. This part of me is protecting me. In this dark ass shit, this dark fucking void that I had entered. So, 
appreciating it more and accepting it more, I fought my way out of it. I was the meanest to that person. I wanted them to feel bad because they made me feel so bad. Like, so bad and for nothing. I was innocent. I didn't know that I was just being um, this something that was just all this pain being inflicted on me type shit. I guess that's my best way of putting it. It was like all this pain was being inflicted on me from this person. And it's like they want to love you, but they don't know how to love you because they love living, but they may not even really love themselves type shit. And all of this negative, heaviest energy is on you, man. I, I got the fuck. I had to go. Um, Another profound part, though, of 2019, I had a very, like, deep conversation with someone that I had misunderstood. This person had been trying to reach out to me for the longest, but I was just trying to, like, tune them out and, you know, because I was being faithful. I was in a relationship, not knowing that, like, a few months later, this person would be gone. But the last conversation we had was very deep. It was very spiritual. It made me comfortable. I was grateful for that because it gave me like a, a glimpse of, of light. It was in September of 2019. And I'll never forget. And it gave me like a glimpse of light true understanding, unconditional understanding. I had misunderstood someone that was really deep, that was really more powerful than I even understood that they were. I had been tuning it out to be this what the fuck that was and it, it made me end the year bad. <laughs> the anger that I felt because it was like, man, I was wasting time being faithful and being locked away. And one of the coolest niggas, I, one of the coolest men that have ever existed died. When I saw that article, it 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 shook something up in me. It whoa, what the hell? And yeah, I showed my ass that day. And I was angry. I was upset. People would think like, oh, you were mad because you was being cheated. No, I was upset because I was being faithful to someone that was not being good to me. That was making themselves look like they were just going through so much of me. No. I was upset because I was being faithful and someone whose conversation and shit I treasured is gone forever. So hell yeah, it was like, fuck you, nigga. I gotta, man, you gotta see me, nigga. Like, fuck you, dog. Like, man, what? That's when, like, this life shit really just, like, hit me different. And keep in mind, I'm 26 at the time, so it's kind of like that, that, Formal, low, growing, brain, fully grown shit. That shit is real. My whole mindset shift is like, I don't ever, I, I need to get out of this shit. I need to get the fuck. I was trying to find my own place again. I just needed to escape and get away. But it was like that dark shit just kept pulling me. The line, games, all that, it was just literally just, fucking with my mind and I'm trying to move on and be cool with nice people like nice dudes or whatever man the beginning of 2020 baby <laughs> let me say this as far as like being in alignment and seeing how this shit works the 4d shift and all this shit like that 2020 was needed I'm glad all this shit happened like the COVID shit, all it, 
I don't I don't know what life would have been like if I was not forced to go back home to mama type shit. All this shit shutting down and things just like people motherfucking nerves on edge and all this shit like that. It was all symbolic for me, me myself, to go back home to mama. Straight up. So Tapping back in with God, praying my way out this situation, being more comfortable with, hey, I know what it is I'm capable of, that beast within type shit, you keep it at risk. There's no need to even take it, though. You know how motherfucker, I know how you are, or you do make me mad. That's the only time your ass gonna make me mad. You'll never make me mad the same again. So I already know what the fuck you about. This is how I'm becoming when it comes down to that. Uh, yeah, so 2018, 2019 grew me the fuck up in the sense of um, don't be judging people, bitch. You don't know people's situation. People are thinking I'm in this relationship with this person and bitches is Going out their way to try to sabotage shit. She was just weird. I wasn't used to that. I for me to just come out of it so fucking um, damaged and shocked. Like 2018, 2019, I saw how fucked up people can be. Maybe more so the end of 2017, I start really seeing how fucked up people can be. But when I really start like accepting, like people are fucked up. There's a lot of fucked up people. Like when you attracting the good people and the people who really love God or source, or they really true, like good people at their heart, at their core, you really be able to tell with ease. Like you just able to just know this shit. It got like that. Okay. I ain't never been like on some I regret the shit shit. Not me today. Maybe me like just coming up out the shit. Oh my gosh. Like just ooh, girl. I'm gonna get into 2020. But 2018, 2019 crucial character Development in the underworld type shit. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I heard it used to be like, expect the unexpected. And blah, blah, blah. You better know that. He was, he was a, 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 a fucked up person, but he was showing me how fucked up people be. It was like a real karmic guide. Like, I needed that type of shit to see. As far as like what it is I'm pursuing, I can't go into that shit being all green and not knowing how motherfuckers are. Fuck that. So I give thanks, gratitude, like <laughs> I overcame this shit. So yeah, next episode we gonna dive off into 2020, okay? 2020, pivotal, COVID. 4D shift, we getting off all into our healing work and childhood traumas and all this shit like that. Like, all this shit came to head in 2020. I'm going to dive off in it. Thank y'all for tuning in to this episode of Counter Talk. And be on the lookout for, once again, 2020.